Good morning and welcome to Worship with Well of Hope ELCA in Castle Rock, Colorado. I'm so glad that you could join us this morning for worship for this live stream on the final Sunday of Lent, believe it or not. Um, I invite you to please take a moment to say hello in the chat so we have a chance to know who we're worshiping with this morning. Rick Verson is our online greeter, so thank you, Rick. Um, he'll be monitoring the chat. If you have any questions or needs, if you just type it in there, he'll be able to respond. Um, a few announcements before we get started. Uh, this Wednesday is going to be our last um, evening Lenten study. We've been gathering on Zoom with five other congregations um, on Wednesday evenings from 6.30 to 7.30 uh, for conversations around the Sermon on the Mount. And this week it's finally my turn to lead that conversation and I'd love to have uh, members of our community there to, to be part of it. So please consider joining us this Wednesday if you're able. Um, this week, we are going to be b delivering bags to your homes. They're um, Holy Week at Home bags, and they contain information, that you, um, information and items that will help you navigate Holy Week, which is coming up. So you'll have palms for Palm Sunday, um, and something for Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, um, and Easter. So uh, members of our executive team are going to be delivering these, so they'll probably reach out with a phone call or a text to, to let you know that they're coming and make a plan for that. Um, in there it contains a letter that has not only what's in the bag, but also um, a list of what we're going to be doing online for our worship opportunities. They're a little bit different each day, so please um, check those out and join us as you are able during Holy Week. If you're not able to join us for the um, live events or the events that are premiering, um, they can be found at any time during the day after they originally premiere on our YouTube page. So um, please tune into Holy Week um, as you are able. And thank you to um, folks that are making the deliveries this week. If you don't normally receive mail from Well of Hope and you would like to um, have a a Holy Week at Home bag, please just drop a note in the chat right now, or you can email me at wellofhopepastor at gmail.com, and we'll make sure that we get you a bag. Um, if you don't live in the Denver metro area, we can mail them as well, so make sure that you drop us your address. Um, I have an update on our Lenten offering as well. We've been um, trying to buy a family farm from ELCA World Hunger, and uh, we are hoping to collect $715. The latest update on that is that we have collected $900. So thank you so much for your generosity. You are going to enable us to buy the farm and um, more as well. So uh, Carol Reed's going to be joining us next week uh, with an announcement to let us know where we are um, at our final total. But if you'd still like to make an offering towards that, um, any of it is helpful and can go to ELCA Good Gifts, um, and that can be done through our webpage or on our Give Plus app um, or through the mail. So thank you very much for um, taking part in that special Lenten offering. Finally, we are live streaming our worship today, which means that we're able to celebrate communion together. So I invite you to join us um, in that time by setting out a small morsel of bread or cracker and a, a small drink or common cup for each person that's going to be communing. And when we get to that part of the service, we're going to consecrate those elements together and uh, commune at one table in different homes. So we invite you to be part of that time. Now we're going to take a moment to quiet our hearts and minds, and then we'll begin with our call to worship. Nothing that I've done, nothing I could ever do, could take me from the shelter of your hand that's holding me. When darkness creeps around me and calls my heart to fear, you promise to be with me.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. By the act of confession, let us return to God, who is full of compassion. Merciful God, our, our sin is heavy, and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined, and mend what we have torn. Forgive us from our sin, what we have done and left undone. Make us alive in the Spirit to follow in the way of Jesus, as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Amen. Beloved in Christ, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving power of Jesus Christ and by the power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Amen. Amen. Now we invite you to join us in singing our gathering song, As the Grains of Wheat. As the grains of wheat, once scattered on the hill, were gathered into one to become our bread, so may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. As this cup of blessing is shared within our midst, may we share the presence of your love. scattered on the hill were gathered into one to become our bread so may all the people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you let this be a foretaste of all that is to come when all creation shares this feast with you as the grains of wheat once scattered on the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, with steadfast love you draw us to yourself, and in mercy you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, that through life and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah, verses 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke. Though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my law within them. And I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God. And they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will give their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Word of God, word of God. Separate us from the light. 
This is the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you. In the name of our risen Savior, Jesus the Christ. It's not what you know, but who you know. Ever heard that bit of advice? As cliche as it sounds, this bit of proverbial wisdom is kind of accurate. Who you know matters a lot. The truth of this phrase is played out time and time again in the job market, in higher education, really whenever access to something important is limited. On the one hand, there's nothing malicious about this practice of leveraging relationship. It's human nature to value shared connection, to have loyalties, to help out the people that we know, or people who know the people that we know. And since like tends to attract like, the benefits of who you know often stay within largely homogenous groups. Not by design, just because that's the way that it is. On the other hand, though, this is also how privilege perpetuates itself. This is how wealth and power and opportunity often remain within tight circles. And this is how some people get shut out completely. They don't know the right people, and they will never have the opportunity to meet them. For that reason, systems that operate strictly like this are fundamentally unfair, maybe even unjust. But when a system benefits you, it's hard to say no. As a faith leader, I'm finally eligible to receive a COVID vaccine uh, as of Friday. But COVID vaccines are hard to come by in Colorado right now. So the first thought I had as I began to wind my way through this very cumbersome system was, who do I know that can get me an appointment? Well, it turns out I don't know anyone, so I'll wait in line with the other 2.5 million Coloradans who are eligible now, and I'll get my shot when it's my turn. But if I did know someone, I probably would have given them a call, because the allure of privilege is hard to resist. Now, I didn't go to a college that had a Greek system, but I remember being encouraged to do so because people said that one of the primary benefits of sororities and fraternities are the opportunities that they create for networking. Your sisters and brothers in those type of organizations become the people that you know, and those relationships can have a great benefit over time. It turns out that the Greeks in colleges and universities are not the first Greeks to figure this out. In our gospel text this morning, we meet other Greeks who know the value of leveraging relationship. Our lesson for today is set immediately after the triumphant entry in the Gospel of John, and immediately before the Last Supper. We are days away from the crucifixion, and Jesus is attracting a whole lot of attention to himself in Jerusalem. Our text says, Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Now why did this group of people go to Philip? Because like attracts like. Philip is a Greek name, which suggests that Philip, like this group at the festival, was also Greek. So Philip and Andrew go to Jesus, 
presumably to introduce members of this group to him because it's who you know, right? And they know Jesus. But rather than welcome them into a private club with exclusive members-only benefits, Jesus responds by saying, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. And then he launches into his last public discourse in the Gospel of John, and it's a doozy. Among other things, Jesus says, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. Because the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is not for the few at the expense of the many. Jesus doesn't bother to defeat the powers of sin and death for a small group of insiders. He does it for the sake of the whole world, that all might be saved through him. The Greeks in Jerusalem, representing the broader world in the Gospel of John, say, we wish to see Jesus. And to that, Jesus says, then look at the cross. On the cross, you will see the true Christ. On the cross, you will see a God who used the power of love to confront the powers of this world. On the cross, you will see a God who's willing to suffer and die to prove that might doesn't make right and that sin and death do not get to have the last word. If you wish to see Jesus, look at the cross. As we study the teachings of Jesus, we learn that he can be glimpsed in more places than just the cross. If we wish to see Jesus, we can also look at the need of our neighbor, and we will see him there. In scripture, we hear Jesus say things like, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Truly, I tell you, just as you did this to one of the least of these who were members of my family, so you did it to me. If we wish to see Jesus, we should look for him among the hungry and the sick and those who suffer. We will always find him there because Jesus identifies most clearly with the poor and the powerless, with those people who will never know the right people. If you wish to see Jesus, you can look for him there. There's one more place that I can think of where those of us who wish to see Jesus might look. In our text this morning, Jesus says, whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there my servants will be also. Then later at the Last Supper, Jesus washes the disciples' feet and tells them that they ought to wash one another's feet. He says, for I have set an example for you that you should do as I have done to you. He then gives them a new commandment. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. If we wish to see Jesus, then we should serve others as Jesus served. Those whom we know, those whom we will never know. And when we serve our sisters and our brothers and our neighbors and strangers, we see the love of Jesus animated in our hearts, hands, feet, and voices. We become the body of Christ in the world. And if we wish to see Jesus, we can just look in the mirror and see the divine reflection in our very selves in action. I understand and relate to the Greeks in our text today. I wish to see Jesus too. I also understand why they went to Philip. It was the natural next step. After all, we are taught and our lived experience proves that who you know often provides access to privilege. And the allure of privilege is hard to resist. But where Jesus is concerned, none of that holds true. In fact, if you wish to see Jesus, it's not who you know at all, but where you choose to look. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now please join us in singing our song of the day, Hymn of Promise. <clears throat> is a flower in the seed and apple tree in cocoons a hidden promise butterflies will soon be free in the cold and snow of winter there's a spring that waits to be unrevealed until its season something god alone can see there's a song in every silence seeking fruit and melody 
There's a dawn in every darkness bringing hope to you and me. From the past will come the future, what it holds a mystery. Unrevealed until it sees on something God alone can see. In our end is our beginning, in our time infinity. In our doubt there is believing, in our life eternity. In our death a resurrection, at the last a victory. Unrevealed until it sees on something God alone. Trusting in the promise of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all people in need. Holy God, we see you in the church. Make your church a community of welcome and love. Give your people courage to forgive, and through them, show the world new possibilities. Be with our bishops, Elizabeth and Jim, and bless the ministries of Reconciling Works and RIC congregations. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Creator God, we see you in creation. Grant weather that prepares the soil for seeds. Protect all from violent storms, flooding, and wildfires. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty God, we see you in justice. Guide citizens throughout the world to shape communities that reflect your mercy, compassion, and peace. And give them creativity to work for the welfare of all. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Healing God, we see you in need. Restore the joy of all who are in need, those who are lonely, who feel unforgivable, those who need healing of mind or body, those who are dying, and those who grieve. We pray especially for Kennedy, Jean, Sandy, Rod, Dave, Joe and Ellen, Doug, John P., and those we name now aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Loving God, we see you in our children. Empower this congregation in the work of faith formation. Be with Lexi in her work with our youth and guide our youth ministry program. Bless the Marbury family as they prepare for Charlie's baptism and be with our confirmation students as they prepare to affirm their faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we see you in the empty tomb. Console those who mourn at bedsides and gravesides. With all those who have died in Christ, bring us into life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We offer ourselves and all of our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of peace with one another. If there are other people in the room with you, please greet them with a sign of peace. Um, uh, type peace into our chat. Send a text with peace out to someone. However you choose to put peace out into the world, I invite you to do so. At this point in our worship, we always say thank you for those gifts and offerings that have continued to support our ministry. And I wanted to say that in the upcoming newsletter, there's going to be an article from our treasurer, Chris Olson, kind of updating folks on our financial status. Our offering has definitely taken a hit during the pandemic, especially as of late. Um, so we invite you to please read that article and prayerfully consider um, how you can continue to support the ministry of Well of Hope so that we can continue um, to worship together like this and also prepare for our return to in-person worship. Um, any offerings can be made through our website and uh, through the mail and through our Give Plus app. So we thank you for those. And now we offer those gifts to God. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us, and these are gifts which we receive from your bounty through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now as we prepare our communion table here, we invite you to prepare your communion table at home. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, 
our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to know the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ Christ has has died. died. Christ Christ has risen. risen. Christ Christ will will come come again. again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine bless this feast. Grace our tables with your presence. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ in the world. Breathe new life into us, sending us forth burning with justice and peace and love. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come. come. Thy Thy will be done, done, on earth earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Do you wish to see Jesus? You can look at the cross, you can look at your neighbor's need, you can look at your own acts of service, or you can look right here at this table. God is present in this meal of bread and wine poured out for the whole world. And it's not just for an insider group of people, it is for the whole world, whoever wants to receive it. As we say in this congregation every week, you don't need to be a member of this congregation, you don't need to be a Lutheran. These are God's gifts for all of God's people, and that is you. So please eat and drink, because the gifts of God are free. free. If you're with others um, in the room, I invite you to commune one another, and if you're by yourself, then I will commune you now. As we say, this is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
And may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you. You are forever in God's grace. Amen. Amen. God of love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit that our lives bear witness to that which has made us new. Let us love God, serve God. Love, love all, serve, serve all. Now receive this benediction. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord abiding in the comfort of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you this day and forever. Amen. Amen. Now we invite you to join us in singing our sending song, Song for the Vineyard. Just like a tree planted by the river, you have borne fruit in the right season. You will not fade, you who will prosper in Jesus. You will stand just like a tree planted by the river. To draw your life from him, you will be filled to overflowing with his life and his word. Just like a tree planted by the river, you will grow strong and you will be unshaken when the wind blows, you will give shelter. like a tree planted by the river you will grow tall and reach your arms to him you will give praise you will give worship to jesus your savior your lord thank you so much for joining us for worship today. Um, I invite you to join us during the week on Wednesdays at noon for Bible study, uh, Wednesday evening for Lenten study. Um, watch this week for your Holy Week at Home bags coming to your houses. Um, and then join us again next Sunday at 10 o'clock as we live stream our Palm Sunday worship. In the meantime, go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>